Hey guys, Abraxas here, and I'm going to be playing some Universe Sandbox 2. It does not... Okay, there it goes. Uh, I was kind of confused there. I thought it was not actually playing any audio. But, uh... I have a suggestion from AAV where he wants me to blow up the moon with the force of a supernova next to Earth. So I'm going to test that out, but uh, I just wanted to say I did not make a video yesterday. It's because I had a job interview, and I was busy most of yesterday. I basically went to the interview, played a little bit of Arma, and then went to, went to sleep, so... Yeah, I didn't get a video out yesterday, I'm aware. But, uh, I'll be sure to get one or two out today, for sure. That including this video right here. So, there is a simulation actually very similar to this. Let's see if I can find it. It should be under explosions, I think. Ah, yes, Earth and exploding moon. Earth explodes? Nope, the moon explodes. Okay, so the moon explodes next to Earth. And it just drops tons of particles next to Earth. But it doesn't really do too much, does it? And, uh, I think there's one of Earth exploding close to the moon. And there it goes. So, yeah. That one had a little bit more effect on the moon than the moon did on Earth. As you can see, it actually kind of formed a bunch of little moons everywhere. Those are just Earth fragments, but yeah, we got a bunch of small planets just kind of flying away. And here's the moon, and it lost a lot of its mass. I think we could actually see how much, yeah, it lost pretty much a majority of its mass. Around 70%, so yeah. Let's go ahead and start a new simulation. Let's just, uh, I think I have one of just Earth and the Sun at one astronomical unit. Okay, and I've done the simulation before uh, without recording. Uh, I noticed it does not have an effect if I were to put it at about the moon's distance, which I'm going to guesstimate is around right here, roughly. If I blow up the moon right now, which if I go to powers, explode with the force of a supernova, set the value to 1. It's not going to actually have any major effects on Earth. I just blew it up. And as you can see, you can't really see anything happened. But there's actually moon fragments very, very far away. And they're kind of scattered everywhere. The moon did explode, but you have to get really, really lucky and hope that one of these fragments actually hit Earth. And, ah, uh, man. I don't know if you guys could hear that out there, but there's a street sweeper and that is quite loud. But uh, let's go ahead and reopen the simulation. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the moon actually rather close to Earth to kind of ensure that it gets hit with some of its fragments. So let's find our moon. There it is. And let's make it orbit very, very close to Earth. Will this actually heat it up with tidal heating? Let's find out. Uh, doesn't seem to be, but uh, let's go ahead and slow down the simulation to less than real time because this explosion is going to be very, very powerful. And let's explode the moon with the force of one supernova. Ooh, one of the fragments went right into Earth, it looks like. You see a shockwave on Earth. Doesn't look like it was really hit with too many particles, unless that's just the force of the moon exploding right next to Earth. Which it could be. Wow. So is there any fragments flying out everywhere? Oh yes, there definitely is. Oh wow, those flew very fast. I'm going 5 minutes per second. thought I was going through milliseconds. Whoops. Went stood here to Earth, so let's go ahead and see what happens. Is all the water going to evaporate away, or is it only going to be that collision right there? Go with the flashlight view. So it looks like it left a pretty big crater on Earth. Um, the temperature is not really going up too fast on Earth, though. it's dropping 
Uh, no, there it goes. Now it's increasing again. That's interesting. I thought that would be a lot more destructive than that actually was. But it barely rose the temperature of Earth at all. Let's just pause it real quick. There's still green life all over Earth, so it's not like it was too devastating to actual life on Earth. As you can see, there's a massive crater here, and we're kind of missing a big chunk of Africa. Oh, and South America might be flooded. Or it might be partially destroyed, too. Actually, I think that's the case. I don't think it's flooding, or else all these areas would be a little bit more uh, flooded as well. But yeah, it definitely took a chunk of South America and Africa. I'm going to run this simulation again. This time with the moon, very, very close. In fact, basically, Roche limit close. So let's go ahead and slow down time, this time to milliseconds. There we go. Let's add the moon in incredibly close. Like this close and that should start being torn up by tidal forces but I'm not gonna hit play and watch it get destroyed we're just gonna blow it up right now I can see the fragments already way out here you see them spread very fast that's millis let's let's listen uh second per second or even half a second per second and it looks like two collisions from what I can see And a lot of smaller collisions. Oh, look at all those little explosions happening on the moon there. You see the huge shock waves just basically roar acro across the planet. You see the green started to dim away. Oh, wow. So the planet is just covered in molten rock, it looks like. It's a lot darker over here. I think that's due to the bump mapping. As you can see, it took like a fat chunk out of the Earth. If you look at it from this angle. Look at that. The Earth is no longer round. I think all life would be extinct at this point, but it doesn't appear to be happening. Let's go back to the realistic lighting. Yeah, there's no city lights and stuff. But that one definitely wiped out all life on Earth. And look at that impact crater. You can see like the uh, lighting from the sun, you can see like parts where chunks were just blown out. And once again that hit uh, Africa, I think maybe parts of India. I'm going to have to change the lighting real quick. Let's go back to flashlight. It not exist anymore. Got a big chunk of Australia and Antarctica. Let's go ahead and fast forward it to where it cools down. Let's pause the simulation. And you can see there's a little bit of a shading effect on, it, uh, on Australia. That means it was impacted, even though it looks basically the same. This is really just a bump map effect to show where the crater is actually hit. Kind of like a, uh, it's either poly occlusion mapping or tessellation, but it gives it a bump effect that makes Earth not exactly round anymore. It could be one of those effects, I'm not really too sure. But yeah, there's definitely a huge chunk taken out of Earth, so that was a pretty devastating impact. And I don't know if there would be green life anymore, uh, but like, North America here is definitely still green. South America is still green. Africa is even still green. All of these areas, not so much. So you get the China, which is kind of frozen over, but that's just because of the uh, climate model in the game. It just kind of freezes wherever it wants to freeze. And if we look at the semi-major axis of Earth, it looks like it's still essentially the same. I don't think it's been affected at all. Nope, it appears to still be the same. Oh, yeah, it does look the same. 
Anyways, uh, yeah, if you guys liked the video, please leave it a like, and if you want to see more videos like this, please do subscribe, it really does help, and look at this, look at this preview image for Earth, oh wow. So, yeah. Anyways, see you guys.